on your feet, the story of Emilio and Gloria Stefan on stage. So here you are as a choreographer and a director. So how does it facilitate to have both roles in a, such a big task? Well, again, thank you so much for having me with you and, and, and sharing the news about our show and the work we're doing. Um, I think for me, it, it's a pretty flowy, natural thing between the choreographic world and the directing world, but it's because I was first a dancer, you know, and, and so my body, my mind, I process things through the choreographic elements and the physical work, um, and that translates into the direction in so many ways, right? And, and in a musical, that's a good thing. Sometimes there's people who don't understand dance, and they are musical directors, and then the dance world ends up being sort of confetti in the way that it's presented, right? It's just entertainment. Actually, one of my big fights is that we call, uh, in musical theater, we say a dance break, right? And it feels, the very nature of that idea makes it feel like there's a break to dance as a breather for the audience. But in real great musical theater, that is the opposite, right? You're utilizing the dance break as an opportunity to extend and expand on the story that you're telling and so for me that those two just go hand in hand right when you can no longer speak you sing when you can no longer sing you dance and that's the formula within the musical theater world can you talk about how you joined so the road to this moment on this national tour in the united states was that i was part of the broadway show i i was able to do the workshop i was able to do the trial in chicago and then transferred to broadway we did x amount of time at the marquee theater um in in, in times square and from there i left the show to go become a director choreographer i, I started getting a lot of great opportunities one of them was telling the story of In the Heights, but in Spanish, in Washington, D.C. Um, that show went out to win nine Helen Hayes Awards. And because of that, Jerry Mitchell respected a lot my decision of leaving the show and eventually gave me the opportunity to become an associate director to him and direct this show in Europe, in, in Amsterdam. Um, I learned a lot and I fell in love even deeper with the story as I was doing that work for him there. Um, and that got me to then be able to tell the Spanish premiere of On Your Feet in Washington, D.C., in the very same theater that I have left the show to go work. Um, and again, win, not, lucky number, nine, Helen Hayes, um, doing On Your Feet now. So I, I have to think about this because there's something with the nine, nine on, on, on the show for me. Um, and Gloria and Emilio came to see it. They were very pleased with the projects, with the product. And um, I ended up doing other projects with Emilio after that, based on the work that I was able to do there. And then we ended up doing this national tour, the second national tour of On Your Feet. And I was able to put a little bit of the, the Luis Salgado stamp in, in the work, if I may say, as far as the choreographic elements and some of the directorial decisions, always respecting what there was before by these great mentors that I love and admire. So where does the story begin for, for with Amelia and Gloria on stage? As far as the show itself, right? Dramaturgically, you're speaking now. Well, it's funny because there's kind of a fake start. The fake start is we're starting in the in the in the big moment of their life um, as they're getting to Washington DC and they're accomplishing, you know, being able to do one of the most important um, presentations in their career uh, for the president of the United States. But um, the show really starts uh, in, in Miami as the father and the mother were already uh, with Gloria in Miami. Gloria was a little girl and her voice was a great caliber and great quality. Um, but there were circumstances happening around them that it wasn't about that. You, hate, you have to work. You have to take care of your family. Gloria, the little girl, had to take care of her sister. And, and so the, the, the story starts from there. And it goes into the journey of her being able to um, really recognize that the power and the talent that there was in her and the voice that she had, not only as a singer, but as a human, you know, as a, as a mujer Latina on the United States, able to really share the agency that she had for herself and for everybody she represents. Well, for the music, uh, uh -huh. I'm, it's, it's in English. Yeah, the show is in English. So you don't touch any of Mi Tierra, maybe some of those. We things. do, we do, we do. Mi Tierra is there. Um, the Mi Tierra is there. There. So for the, when we say the the show is in English, it's the traditional script that was created for 
the broadway stage and in that already we were de definitely dealing with the spanglish reality that the music catalog of this definitely has so you know uh, you have conga which was a big you know crossover success but you also have um songs from from oh my god i just forgot the name of the album but where mi tierra precisely is you know you have that song there you also have con los años que me quedan in spanish so you get a little bit of everything mi tierra is my favorite maybe because yeah that, that that cuban that that rhythm the i don't know we, you know that that sentiment yeah you know what's funny that within the show there's this dichotomy um, there's a scene, I don't want to give a lot of way, but there's a scene actually where the DJs are debating within themselves, right? So Emilio is trying to pitch, hey, why you should play this? And the, and the DJ is like, that's too American. I don't understand that. Why you're doing this, the syncopation, that's not like, I, bring me mi tierra, bring me guaguaco. And, and, the, and then they go to the, for the Latin DJ is like, that's, that sounds too gringo, basically. And the, and the American DJ, it's like, that's too Latino. And so they live in this, in this mix of sound that they created so authentically um, that it, for a little bit, it was hard to even describe it. Even as we're having this conversation, we're now focused on the Spanish-English dichotomy of what the show could be, when in reality, they live and coexist in both of those truths, you know? Wow. Well, I'm so glad I got to ask because I was very curious because obviously the English lyric songs, I mean, those are exciting and fun, but La Raiz, Latina, those words, I mean, they, I, to me, I feel like it has another delivery. Yeah. And when I did it in Washington, D.C., I felt that, you know, in the process of creating and directing and learning the show from a different angle, you know, hearing certain scenes in Spanish have a very different impact. And Gloria was very, very um hands on and very nurturing in the way like she would email me every week with like hey i just thought about this one word for this verse that i think is going to make more sense like the passion I, I mean she she's gloria stefan she doesn't have to do that but she has such a commitment and respect and love for the work that they put out there that that was the level of commitment she had uh, even when we were doing uh, the, the Spanish version. And so I understand what you're saying, but when I say the English show, I mean the, 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 the show that was created on Broadway that was created in English for all American market, but that also celebrates the Spanish language versus what we did in Washington DC, where we basically translated everything to Spanish. And there was like, si no lo entiende, good luck, you know? because it, it was it very intentionally for the, for the Spanish market. Um, but obviously within the English market, one of the greatest things they do is always honor and respect and elevate where they come from. So there will always be an authenticity of language, both in the music and in the story. Well, thank you so much for your time, Luis. And hopefully this this makes sense uh, in the way that we share it, uh, because we, we went into a very specific topic with language. So thank you for that.